In this new episode of the IT Show, we'll go through Azure Sphere. And we have A9TL, the Azure Sphere product is in public preview today. And we're really thrilled to have Ed on the show to tell us about what is Azure Sphere and give us that introduction. Hey, hi, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today we have Ed Nightingale with us. Hi. Ed is going to talk to us about Azure Sphere. So we're going to have a nice overview today in this show about Azure Sphere. Ed, before we jump into the topic, yeah. can you please introduce yourself to our audience sure. here? My name is Ed Nightingale, and I have the pleasure of being the architect for the Azure Sphere product. The architect, that's what I'm bringing you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> So Azure Sphere, for those who don't know what is Azure Sphere, uh, what exactly is it? Well, Azure Sphere is all about end-to-end -end IoT security. Okay. So it is an end-to-end -end platform for securing everyday IoT devices. And today we're going to give you a walkthrough about why we're building this product okay. and what that product provides for our customers and users. Got it. So it's not just about the piece of hardware, it's a not. little tiny device, right? There's no. way more behind it. That's right. And that's, that's very right. interesting because that's an approach that we've we've seen people talking about security and talking about software, middleware, yeah. Yeah. or they're talking about hardware security and things like that. But now, I think it's one of the first time we're hearing like talking about end-to-end -end security for IoT, right? It's end-to-end. -end. It's about taking all of Microsoft's experience in building secure hardware platforms mm -hmm. and blending it with all of our experience building operating systems as well as our cloud platform. Nobody else really has that end-to-end -end story. Yeah, we do have an experience there, right? Yeah. Awesome. So how do you approach, like if you had to explain Azure Sphere to not a five years old, because yep. we, we have like seasoned developers right, and right. architects here, but still, an overview is that of Azure Sphere, um, like what is it exactly? Well, we start really with microcontrollers. And we always start with this because sometimes you're not aware of what they really are. And when I think about a microcontroller, I think about the word pervasive computing. Mm -hmm. Microcontrollers are everywhere in your home, in your office, in your hotel. They make up the fabric of computing that you never see. Okay. If it has a screen, if it has a button, it's got a microcontroller in it. Mm -hmm. There are 9 billion microcontroller devices sold every year. It's a massive number, and it's a whole ecosystem that a lot of people just aren't even familiar with. Correct, yeah. And then you have also a combination of microcontrollers into bigger devices like cars right. and things like that, right? That's right. Or there could be hundreds of microcontrollers in some devices. and be a whole yep. fabric of them to make everything work. Okay. Yeah. So the interesting thing is that there's only 1% that are connected. There are all these microcontrollers that are doing their job every day for you. Mm -hmm. You don't see them, but they're not connected to the internet. Okay. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix it. And that <laughs> is what the opportunity really is. When you think about what happens with microcontrollers, you think about changing your everyday experience. When mm -hmm. uh, a device can adapt to the way you interact with it, when a device can provide a new experience based on an experience you ask for, that is the benefit of connectivity. That's the benefit of an interactive experience. Mm -hmm. It's the benefit of devices that get better over time. Those are all the promises of moving from devices to connected devices. Makes sense. Yeah. And this is happening right now. This is not something new, right? This is something that is happening you know, as we talk. It is. It is. The problem is that why is there only 1%? That's the big question. Yeah. Like, Well, yeah, there's this totally. big revolution in connectivity. Why are so few devices connected? Well, uh, I'm sure you've seen it. What happens when you connect a device to the internet? Uh, Everything well, goes wrong, uh, yeah, right? Well, security, Refrigerators security, setting spam, security. baby monitors that spy on you, uh, devices that turn off. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really saw, I think we had a reckoning in fall of 2016 with the Mirai botnet. Mm. The Mirai botnet took over the east coast of the United States, yep. brought it to its knees. Uh -huh. Now, what's scary about the Mirai botnet? Well, there's a bunch of things here. One, uh, it was an embarrassing flaw in the device. There is a default password. I believe it was R-O-O-T. Very difficult to guess. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't change the password. And mean root. That's yeah, right. Yeah, you exactly. couldn't change yeah. it. And even when people knew there was something wrong, there was no way for the manufacturer to update the pass to update the firmware. Disaster. Okay, so, so the problem was going beyond having that security flow in the system was actually about the fact that no one could actually go fix it. That's right. You right. couldn't. You didn't have this end to end. You didn't have a way to go back and address the problems you make because yeah. we're yeah, yeah. every piece of software has bugs. We have to expect vulnerabilities to be discovered. Yeah. You know, you're only as secure as the software you built yesterday for the vulnerabilities you knew about. You have to be able to go back and address those yeah, issues yeah. in the future. And what's other scary is that this is 100,000 devices. Only 100,000. We talked about 9 billion. If yes. 100,000 devices can wreak havoc, that is, that's something we really have to worry about. Yep. Uh, this is one more example for you that I think you'd, you'd enjoy. Uh, Casino hooked up a thermometer uh -huh. to measure the temperature in an aquarium. Think, well, that's safe. And a hacker found a way to bounce from the thermometer into the high roller database 
in the back office, steal the high roller data of the of the casino from a thermometer. So not not for this presentation, not for this episode here, but there's a problem in IT as well. Because like yeah. if you don't like compartment your your devices and networks that are separate from one another, actually yeah. you end up in these kind of problems, right? There's probably a series of flaws that happen. That, yeah, 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 that, yeah. But that's but how like, it happens, right? Yeah. A bunch of independent decisions that cascade together to create a sort of catastrophe. You're just curing us, right? <laughs> okay. That's right. That's, that's right. Your DRM, but <laughs> <laughs> And so, so you know, I like to talk about a connected refrigerator. We see early mm -hmm. examples of this, and the great experience is that the connected refrigerator monitors your maintenance, keeps mm -hmm. the device running well. But imagine if you came home one day and you had a text message on your phone and said, "We own your fridge. Pay us five dollars in Bitcoin, or all the ice cream melts." Unhappy kids. Your fridge is no longer your own. I mean, even worse. Uh, you know, we talk about yep. economic impact. What about physical? What about a stove that could be blown up? So. One of the reasons I'm involved with Azure Sphere is the need to have a societal good. I want to help raise the bar for security and IoT. Mm -hmm. There's another reason, which is I want to make sure people have an easy way and a secure way to get onto our Azure IoT platform. I think it's the best platform in the world. Yep. But I think there's a service we're providing too to raise the bar here, provide a better minimum standard of guarantee. And that's what this is all about. It's about building security from the beginning. Okay, makes sense. And I know you have a way of introducing that notion of security in, in various, you know, angles. Yes. Um, that it was, which was what the seven principles of security. Yes. I think it's important to actually go through that once because that actually lays the ground for what's coming next, which is like, what is the product? How does it address these various principles of security? Great. Great. And how do we actually have a nice coverage of all the fields that are, uh, you know, a threat or that are actually a surface of uh, attack for for anyone who wants to you know threaten an IT application. Sure, right? uh, it's a it's a great point. So what's Microsoft done about this? Well, there's 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 two prong approach when it comes to Azure Sphere. This first is a white paper called the Seven Properties of Highly Secure Devices. Yeah, yeah. And this is Microsoft putting a marker out there that says this is the minimum set of properties that any connected device should have yep. to have a chance of being secure. Cool. If you're interested in that one, we're going to add a link in the description of the video so that way you can access that that uh, that white paper. Absolutely. Here, right? okay. Go take a look. Yep. Read the paper. Comment on it. Let us know what you think. We're interested in this discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, what, one of the reasons we published this paper is that beforehand, someone could ask their supply chain, are you secured? And every supply chain manager and every product in that supply chain is going to say, of course we are. Of course, yeah. The seven <laughs> properties uh, are a way for someone to start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Do you have a harder route of trust? Is my device, can my device be forged or impersonated? Do I have a small trusted computing base? Is it possible to have renewable security, which allows me to do that over there update and address that problem we saw on the Mirai botnet? Yeah. Am I using certificate-based authentication or am I using passwords? These questions and these properties allow someone to make a more intelligent decision when it comes to thinking about yeah. the connected devices ecosystem. That's why we publish this paper. Okay, so like you can go through that and say, check the boxes. Yes, I'm good. I'm That's go right. Oh, I have a hole here. That's right. How That's do right. I go about solving that? And That's these nice. properties aren't new. You know, we're not inventing something new, but these properties often exist as a value add mm -hmm. or as more expensive platforms, yep. right? And what we're trying to do is take all those properties that Microsoft has in its other products and bring it all the way down to that low end MCU space. Yep. That's what we're trying to do. Yep. And actually, I want to bring back something you said at the beginning, which is all of that is coming from years of experience. Yes. From Microsoft in the enterprise, in the internet, in the OS business with, with Windows and all the application that we have. Yes. Um, the services as well, yeah. right? Because the notion of service is something that's like different than a software and an OS. So these, this experience is actually building up uh, to what we have here in terms of security guidance or... You're absolutely right. We're building on, on decades of experience. And that's what lets us uh, bring this product to market with a lot of confidence. Okay. So, you want to talk about the product a little bit? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, that was the seven properties. Now, what is the product? The product uh, we think about has three main pillars. The first are Azure Sphere certified MCUs. Mm -hmm. These are MCUs that meet the minimum requirements laid out by Microsoft. Okay. And they have a, what we'll talk about in a moment is some security IP mm -hmm. that Microsoft is licensing for free to any silicon manufacturer that wants to produce an Azure Sphere certified chip. Got it. So it's not just like, a, like we, I think we, we're going to talk in other episodes whatever, about a dev kit that we've been designing working with some silicon vendors That's on, right. but like silicon vendors can actually create Azure Sphere devices. We right? are counting on it. Okay. Absolutely, because that's how we're going to scale out this ecosystem. Right now Makes we have sense. one chip, but okay. in the future we expect there to be dozens of chips available to device manufacturers well, to use. I think that the security story actually uh, appeals to add more of these. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So then the second 
pillar is the uh, Azure Sphere operating system. So this okay. is an operating system that's created by Microsoft and it's maintained by Microsoft. So mm -hmm. we keep it up to date. We handle all the security issues for the 10 year lifetime of the device. Okay. So I think there's going to be a lot of questions about the US itself, not for this episode again. Uh, at a high level, I think people are questioning like, is it based on Windows, is it based on Linux? What is it based on? And yeah. the other thing is, is it open source? Can I access the code and see what's in there? Because when sure. it comes to security, one of the things that I think are important, personally think are important is that if you want to put that software in your hardware, sometimes it's interesting to be able to look at the code and, and, and vet it from yep. your perspective, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, and the operating system is a, a custom operating system that we've built, mm -hmm. but uh, at the core of it is a custom version of Linux kernel that's okay. been built for IoT. And of course, that Linux kernel is open source and is available as part of the Azure Sphere Public Preview. Okay, And we're cool. counting on contributions to that kernel, both from, from silicon manufacturers and device mm -hmm. manufacturers who want to improve it and add features to it. Awesome. So that actually also can increase, uh, you know, the response, or actually decrease the response time to any vulnerability that could be found in the future. It's like, hey, there's something here before it actually is even a problem. Maybe that's you right. should, yeah. That's, that's cool. right. Like that's that. right. But yep. Yep. And then the third pillar is the Azure Sphere Security Service. Okay. So the security service is what brokers trust between device to device and device to cloud interaction. The security mm -hmm. service is built in a way that a device, any online service can tell whether Microsoft has vouched for the authenticity and the health of the device. And so that security service comes out of the box as part of the Azure Sphere product. Okay, and that's actually addressing this notion of like the billions of devices, yeah. right? You were saying Mirai, Mirai um, Botnet was about like 100K devices that were a problem. To address security on devices over the year is a requirement when we talk about 9 billion. You cannot send someone as a USB stick like, to update no. you no. Know, your device yep. everywhere, right? No, nope. so you can't do it. You rely on that security service. And yeah. the big deal is that uh, Azure Sphere doesn't require a subscription. So we know that device manufacturers are what we call cog sensitive, uh -huh. sensitive their margins. Mm -hmm. So the cost of Azure Sphere is the chip. Okay. And as when it comes with the chip is a license. And that license gives you a license for the operating system for 10 years of support for the operating system, yeah. as well as 10 years of usage of the Azure Sphere security service. Okay. We never want a company to have to make a month to month decision about security. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And then that device works seamlessly with your Azure IoT subscription. You're able to hook those devices up through your Azure IoT DPS and mm -hmm. Azure IoT Hub, and away you go. Awesome. Yeah. That was a great introduction to Azure Fear. Good. We're going to have you more on the show for other episodes to dive into the silicon, to yeah. actually show us a Blinky demo with yeah. Visual Studio and things like that. Yeah. But for now, I think you got a great introduction to Azure Sphere. We're going to add some links to the video. Thanks, Ed, for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. See you soon. Yep.